The voice of the drum calls. It sings a song of those who came before us and those to come. A song of survival and strength. A song of participation and voice. A song that calls us together. When we come together and participate in the 2010 census, we use this tool as the voice of all our native people. Our voice, it is in our hands, 2010 census. Hello, I'm Camelia Costa. Welcome to the Native News Update. It's Friday, March 5th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. A band of Utah Native Americans have joined forces to stop Utah Transit Authority in its tracks. Six tribal groups claim UTA is trespassing on sacred burial grounds in Draper, Utah. Officials claim they received permits and conducted environmental impact statements to run the line through the area. But when a construction company dumped topsoil near a parcel of land near the proposed track line, Native Americans became angry. The Sunkani village is the largest discovery of Native American artifacts ever found in the Salt Lake Valley. It has been estimated that there is as many as one million artifacts on the land area, on the land around the area. In August of 2009, Governor Hebert signed a conservation easement to protect the land from development and with UTA's alleged intrusion on the land, Native Americans call the move disrespectful. UTA said construction of the 46-mile project will continue, but the stretch of disputed land in Draper is off limits. They've agreed to a title review to determine property boundaries. Bill Lawrence, a Red Lake Ojibwe and crusading journalist who hounded tribal officials in northern Minnesota for more than 20 years and helped send some to prison, passed away March 2nd in Idaho, where he was being treated for prostate cancer at a veteran area mo medical center. Lawrence Seventy was founder and editor of the Native American Press, Ojibwe News, which he began in 1988 and published in Bemidji, Minnesota. In addition to his campaigns against corruption, Lawrence fought for requirements that audits of Indian casinos be pu made public. He received an award for that in 2003 from the Society of Professional Journalists and published a series dealing with the causes and consequences of fetal alcohol syndrome among Minnesota's Indians. A memorial service is scheduled for March 13th at Bemidji State University's Memorial Hall. Montana-based G&G Advertising, a group specializing in reaching Native American audiences, are one of several ethnic-specific advertising companies hired by the 2010 Census. This year, the census is spending an unprecedented $320 million on advertising, nearly $150 million of which is being spent on reaching out to minorities. Native Americans weren't even counted as individuals by the census until 1930. Up until that point, <coughs> partial estimates were used for tribes who were just asked to give a head count of their members to the government. And despite changes in, in its policies over the years, the Census Bureau believes American Indians are still being undercounted. Salt River Solar and Wind, a leading solar installation company based in Surprise, Arizona, announced that the company will be a major sponsor of First Nations Golf Association Talking Stick Championship Golf Tournament in Scottsdale, Arizona on March 12th through the 14th. The event will be hosted by the Salt River Pima community. Salt River Solar and Wind is the first non-Native American company to step forward with financial support of the tour. This prestigious golf tournament represents over 50 Native nations across the United States and Canada with the honor of Native Americans striving to become champion golfers. Fields of Vision Production Company has produced a series of films that goes against what experts roundly believe about the peoples who walked this land long before the landing at Plymouth Rock. Once believed to be a home to be un once believed to be home to an unevolved Native American people, the Hitting Landscapes film series is challenging the tenant that northeastern Native Americans were technologically simplistic. Recent discoveries and interpretations highlighted in the film show that not only were northeastern Native Americans highly communicative between different groups, but also conceivably quite skilled in navigation. 
Fields of Visions teamed with Tim Rec Productions to produce the Hidden Landscapes series. The series highlights the chance discoveries, data analysis, intense research, and technological innovations that got folded in with some informed guesswork. The result is an array of film and photography of Native American landmarks and a spreading sentiment that what we know of Native American culture in that area may very well be wrong. And don't forget that we have a live stream tomorrow of a hand drum contest in Mille Lacs, Minnesota at IndianCountryTV.com. You can check that out at our featured channel. And that's the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.